Good morning and welcome to today's service. We have taken decision to hold the service by Zoom this morning due to the uncertainties caused by tier four lockdown introduced last night. We are allowed to meet in church, but Ian and I were worried about the safety of our particular congregation. So I hope you understand the decision we have taken today. I'd just like to remind you that God is with us, whether we are in church, sitting in a dining room, in a lounge, in a bedroom, in a study, or even in the garden. He has been with us on previous Zooms and will be with us today. We will review the, the Christmas services this week and let you know what is happening. And we appreciate that it is a particularly important time of year. Now on to the notices this morning. Uh, the advent windows continue to be uh, a, a resounding success, so please um, see what the notices in the Pews News as to which is going to be happening this week. The food bank and um, uh, some fantastic collections have been going on over the last few weeks and Andy is asking for some special treats, for example, mince pies, chocolates, biscuits. He'll be doing a special delivery on Monday, so we'd really appreciate those. With regard to events this week, we've got the carol singing at seven o'clock on Tuesday evening, led by Jonathan. We have the crib service at 4 p.m. on Christmas Eve. We've got the midnight service at 11.30 p.m. Um, led by Rod Jones. In Stonehouse is going to lead the Christmas service at 10 o'clock. Um, and I'd just like to say thank you to all of those who've been involved in preparing for the everything this Christmas week. You've all been amazing and thank you. Just to let you know, because we are holding today's service via Zoom, uh, the carols and the readings will be exactly the same as what's been advertised in Pew's News, but the wording will be slightly different and that will all be displayed on the screen. Please stay um, after the service. We will have a, be able to have a coffee and a chat after the service. So feel, feel free to do so at the end of the service. And please remember to um, stay on mute throughout the service so we can enjoy everything that's going on. I'm now going to half pass you over to Michael Dunk, who's going to lead today's service. Uh, enjoy. Thank you. Well, good morning and welcome, uh, and my welcome to Sarah's. It's all the chaos that we're expecting uh, in the next few days and, and restrictions on our lives, uh, of course, reflected in the story 2,000 years ago. There are, um, the restrictions and the demands upon the life of Mary and Joseph as they uh, headed towards Bethlehem. Grace, mercy and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. Uh, we're going to be lighting the fourth candle. I think we have a, a recording of the lighting of the fourth candle. fourth candle reminds us of uh, Mary. Uh, the other three candles are the, the uh, patriarchs, the prophets, John the Baptist and now Mary. So may the light, the bright light of Christ enlighten our hearts, shine in our minds and direct our journey and give light to the world. Maranatha, come Lord Jesus. First hymn we listen to, the first carol we listen to, is the first Noel.
one advantage of being at home is that at least we can sing the carols. When the Lord comes, he will bring to light the things now hidden in darkness and will disclose the purposes of the heart. Therefore, in the light of Christ, let us confess our sins. Let us listen and turn to the Lord in penitence and faith. God, through Jesus Christ, will judge the secret thoughts of all. Lord, have mercy. Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you came to gather the nations into the peace of your kingdom. Lord, have mercy. You come in word and sacrament to strengthen us in holiness. Christ, have mercy. You will come in glory with salvation for your people. Lord, have mercy. Show us your compassion, O Lord. Forgive us our sins and grant us your salvation. Lord, have mercy. May the God of love bring you back to himself, forgive you your sins and assure you of his eternal love in Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Today's Colic. God, our Redeemer, who prepared the Blessed Virgin Mary to be the mother of your Son, grant that as she looked for his coming as our Saviour, so we may be ready to greet him when he comes again as our Judge, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Now listen to The Shepherd's Farewell by Berlioz.
The reading is from Romans chapter 16, verses 25 to 27. Now to him who is able to establish you by my gospel and the proclamation of Jesus Christ, according to the revelation of the mystery hidden for long ages past, but now revealed and made known through the prophetic writings by the command of the eternal God, so that all nations might believe and obey him. To the only wise God be glory forever through Jesus Christ. Amen. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. In the sixth month, God sent the angel Gabriel to Nazareth, a town in Galilee, to a virgin pledged to be married to a man named Joseph, a descendant of David. The virgin's name was Mary. The angel went to her and said, Greetings, you who are highly favoured, the Lord is with you. Mary was greatly troubled at his words and wondered what kind of greeting this might be. But the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, you have found favour with God. You will be with child and give birth to a son, and you are to give him the name Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. The Lord God will give him the throne of his father David, and he will reign over the house of Jacob forever. His kingdom will never end. How will this be, Mary asked the angel, since I am a virgin? The angel answered, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. So the Holy One to be born will be called the Son of God. Even Elizabeth, your relative is going to have a child in her old age, and she, who was said to be barren, is in her sixth month. For nothing is impossible with God. I am the Lord's servant, Mary answered. May it be to me as you have said. Then the angel left her. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. We are speaking in the name of the living God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Amen. We don't know what Mary was doing when the angel Gabriel showed up. Scripture doesn't tell us. I am willing to bet, however, that getting pregnant with and ultimately giving birth to the Son of God was not on her to-do list for the day. Whatever she was doing, Gabriel interrupted her day, physically, emotionally and spiritually. With Gabriel's announcement, Mary's life and world were interrupted. Her plans and expectations were interrupted. It seems that God is always breaking into and interrupting our lives in ways, places and times that we do not expect and that we can neither explain nor fully understand. Without the Annunciation, Advent is stripped of meaning and hope. It becomes nothing but a season of superficial celebration. We cannot therefore separate and distance the Annunciation from the Advent journey. The mystery of the Incarnation announced by Gabriel both interrupts and completes our season's journey. The angel Gabriel comes to a young woman, Mary, and announces that she will conceive and give birth to new life, the Son of God. The Annunciation gives meaning to and fulfills everything that happens in Jesus' life, everything he does and everything that he is. With the Annunciation, the divine thread is woven through every room, the fabric of human life that has forever been changed. We should look at the fabric of our own life, what is being conceived, what is being birthed, where is creativity happening, how is our imagination being sparked. 
what are our losses and sorrows? What are our darknesses? What has died or is dying within us in order to give birth to something new? With the Annunciation, God promises to interrupt our lives. Gabriel's words should echo in our bodies, interrupting our lives with new life. That's the interruption we should yearn for. Whether we understand it or not, that's the interruption we might even be seeking today. At Christmas time, both, most people think about the birth of Jesus as the coming of Christ. It and then reveals more. It is about preparing ourselves for the Christ to come in personal and visible form. Mary could trustingly carry Jesus because she knew how to receive spiritual gifts. In fact, the spiritual gift. We have much to learn from her. We learn that we can't manage, manoeuvre or manipulate spiritual energy. It's a matter of letting go and receiving what is given freely. It is the gradual emptying of our attachment to our small self so that there is room for new conception and new birth. There must be some dis displacement before there can be any new replacement. There is no mention of any moral worthiness, achievement or preparedness in Mary, only humble trust and surrender. She gives us all, therefore, a limitless hope in our own situation. We ourselves try to manage God, we will never give birth to the Christ. Whenever the material and the spiritual coincide, there is the Christ. From now, the Christ comes again whenever we are able to see the spiritual and the material coexisting in any moment, in any event, and in any person. All matter reveals spirit, and spirit needs matter to reveal itself. The forever coming of Christ happens whenever and wherever we allow this to be for us. This is how God continually breaks into history. There is something profoundly moving about God's visitation into Mary's life and her call to bear the Christ child. The angel Gabriel says to Mary, Greetings, highly favoured one. It is heartwarming that Mary should be highly favoured by God. What a wonderful young woman she must have been to be highly favoured. What an incredible calling on her life to bear the Saviour of the world, to be chosen for that ministry and to be blessed by God in that way. And yet, as it is with us, so it was with Mary that her life became one of significant contrast. Mary had moments of deep joy in her life, but she had moments of deep pain as well. Her life, like ours, was a study of contrasts, joy and sorrow, pleasure and pain, clarity and confusion, purposeful and aimless. And Mary, like us, had to learn to navigate the waters of life in such a way as to find meaning and purpose as a child of God. Mary said to the angel, Here am I, the servant of the Lord, let it be with me according to your word. But from that moment onwards, it seemed as if her life descended into chaos. Mary's marriage was hanging in the balance. We all know the story. Mary had become pregnant during the period of betrothal, and under the law of Torah, she faced divorce at the very least and possibly being stoned or killed for her perceived behaviour. Mary had become a disgrace to the family and an embarrassment to Joseph, and he considered a quick and quiet annulment of their betrothal. Mary, though, was a good Jewish woman, growing up under the tyranny of the oppressive military dictatorship. The Romans were very much in control. The ordering of the census to prove that, that their own leaders, like King Herod, were tyrants who ruled over society with a rod of iron. A few years previously, there had been a civil uprising, a revolt against the Romans, and even now in Mary's day, the world was a dangerous place in which to bring up a child. We sometimes look at our lives and we see chaos and disturbance. Relationships are not how we would like them to be. 
have there is financial stress or employment or the lack of it which is causing anxiety. Perhaps we feel trapped and unable to escape from our day to day pressures. We may look at our lives and we see only problems. Sometimes it seems such a stark contrast, contrast to the hopes and dreams we once held and we may wonder where God's favour has gone in our lives. But something else was happening in the story about Mary. Her life was a bit of a mess, but there was an emerging miracle. Jesus Christ, the Saviour of the world, was emerging from her. I believe that miracles emerge, they don't come fully formed, they need time to be nurtured and safeguarded in the womb of our being. For nine months, Mary had carried the miracle in secret. And even when people saw the signs of the miracle growing within her and heaped scorn and abuse on her and misunderstood the miracle within, she still kept it secret and loved the miracle and guarded it with all her being. Our lives are a study of contrasts, just like Mary's. There's often a set of external circumstances that disrupt our lives but the inner reality may well be an emerging miracle and we need to be able to see both at the same time. The angel Gabriel said to Mary, Greetings, highly favoured one. The word favoured has its Greek roots in the idea that God is bestowing his grace on us. It is God's grace that whatever mess our lives may be in at the present time, a miracle can emerge from it. And that, of course, is the incredible nature of the nativity of Jesus. That a miracle emerges from chaos and in God's good providence. It is not that the miracle emerges despite the chaos, but that the chaos itself is part of the emerging miracle. The nativity of Jesus occurs in Bethlehem, a tiny village in the backwater of Israel, a place of no renown, an instantly forgettable place. So oh, who could ever have dreamt that a miracle would emerge out of somewhere so anonymous and ordinary? And yet it does, because this ordinary place was the right place for the miracle to happen. If we look at our lives from a purely human perspective, we may only see confusion. But if we try to discern the hand of God on us, we may just see a miracle emerging from it. Sometimes we need to sift through the rubble and debris bad decisions, inappropriate actions and wrong choices. But as we do that, so the miracle can be discerned. Like Mary, we need to be able to look deeply into our circumstances and trust that God is growing a miracle inside us. If we can do that, we will be able to make some sense of the confusion and learn to see it for what it is, the birthplace of a miracle then our faith in God will increase and we will be able to see, say with Mary, I am the Lord's servant, may it be to me as you have said. Amen. Now we're going to listen to the Coventry Carols, one that's I quite haunting. It's a 16th century carol originating from Coventry. It was traditionally performed during Coventry mystery plays, which were medieval plays telling New Testament stories, including that of nativity. The lyrics rather disturbingly just detailed King Herod's harrowing orders made in the news of the birth of Jesus to slay all children known as the Massacre of the Innocents. So not very cheery at all, of course, which is why it is set to a hauntingly sombre but undeniably beautiful minor melody. The lyrics are heartbreaking, farewelling with children that Herod had ordered to be killed. Surely the most poignant of the minor key traditional Christmas carols.
we say together in faith. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty, who was and is and is to come. We believe in God the Father, who created all things. For by his will they were created and have their being. We believe in God the Son, who was slain. For with his blood he purchased us for God, from every tribe and language, from every people and nation. We believe in God the Holy Spirit. The Spirit and the Bride say, Come, even so, come Lord Jesus. Amen. Gathered as the church of God, gathered as the church of God, let us pray together for the coming of the kingdom. Lord of heaven, may the church be quiet enough to hear your voice, humble enough to move your way, and excited enough to spread the good news. Lord of heaven, bless all those who lead with integrity and respect for others. Bless all in positions of authority with humility and a sense of right. May unjust practices be changed for good and conflicts be peacefully resolved. We pray that your holy and life-giving spirit may so move the hearts of the nations of the world that the barriers of fear, suspicion and hatred which separate us crumble. That mankind may be healed of divisions and be united in bonds of justice and peace. Lord of heaven, make our homes places of loving acceptance and developing faith. Teach us in all our friendships to grow in generosity of spirit. And in our cycle of prayer, we pray for the residents of Bitten Hill, the church flower arrangers, and the people of Central and East Africa. Lord of heaven, give patience and courage to those who have to wait when the waiting is long and painful. Bring healing to all who are wounded, whether physically, emotionally or spiritually, and give them assurance of your divine presence. Lord of heaven, welcome into your eternity those who have died and whose hope is in you. Comfort those who mourn them and calm their pain with your love. May the souls of the departed rest in your peace and rise in glory. You turn our darkness into light, and in your light we shall see light. In this time of uncertainty and anxiety, let us pray for peace in our hearts. Lord of heaven, we invite your peace to rule our hearts. As we end this year, let us reflect on the many gifts you have given us. Let our hearts be encouraged with the truth that you are a faithful God. We thank you for the peace we have through you. Lord of heaven, on this last Sunday of Advent, we quietly reflect on the mystery of Christ's birth. We rest in awe and wonder how God entered our world to be with us. We pause to receive the gift offered to us, that the Spirit of God will open up our lives and that Jesus will come into our hearts. May we have watchful hope today, believing what the Lord promises us. Let us pray today that we may be God's servants, that we might be instruments of God's love for our families and all whom we serve this week. Lord, make us turn to you. Let us see your face and be amazed. Accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Let us pray for the coming of God's kingdom in the words our Saviour taught us. Our Father in heaven, 
hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Now listen to one of the well-known carols, Long Ago Prophets New. Our Lord says, I am coming soon. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. May the Lord, when he comes, find us watching and waiting. Amen. May God the Father judge all merciful, make us worthy of a place in his kingdom. Amen. May God the Son coming among us in power, Reveal in our midst the promise of his glory. Amen. May God the Holy Spirit make us steadfast in faith, joyful in hope, and constant in love. Amen. As we await our coming Saviour, go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. Amen.